Hi everyone, and welcome to my bourbon lair. <laughs> uh, Nancy thought it'd be uh, kind of cool if I, I filmed my part in here. Uh, I got a few questions that she wants me to toss on this part of it. Uh, one of them just has nothing to do with bourbon because when I go out traveling a lot of times, uh, if I'm waiting on Nancy and Craig, if they're filming someplace and everything, uh, from years and years ago, I played Pokemon Go with a bunch of the, the young engineers at 3M and kind of stuck. It's been off my phone quite a few times and I I downloaded, especially if I'm going places like extended vacations. Mm -hmm. I love, if, if you ever go to Universal Studios, Calif or Universal Studios and Islands, Islands of Adventure, can't talk, um, there's just tons of that stuff around there. So it gives me something to do, you know, while I'm waiting in lines and stuff like that. I'm not a vehement player. Um, somebody wanted to know what my favorite Pokemon was. And besides Pikachu, I couldn't think of any other names. So I suppose uh, I can remember years ago when we were doing it, there was one that was called Lapras. It was like a sea creature, like a Loch Ness Monster kind of thing that was super hard at that time to find. So that's probably would have been my favorite when I found one of those. Um, and somebody want to know what my Pokemon ID is. I don't even know how to find that, you know, so, um, my, I'm Joe, I'm Joe Cyclone on all one word, capitalized J, capitalized C, and I don't think, maybe that's it. That's, but that's my name on there. So that's enough Pokemon. Um, let's see, uh, a while back, somebody asked me if, if I had ever tried Ben Holiday, and if I liked it. Um, ben Holiday comes out of Missouri, and it was weird because something that is that close to Iowa, that it, at that time, when I, I did find a bottle of it, and it was actually on Iowa's allocated list, where only, when I got my bottle, only 48 bottles that even came in the entire state got lucky, and that morning I, I caught one and, and I was so happy about that and everything. Now, Ben Holiday, as you can see right, well, there's Ben Holiday, and you can see I've got another one I'm sitting back there. I got lucky enough when it was still on allocation to find two, but now it has become unallocated in Iowa, meaning it's readily available. Excuse me, but readily available. Um, there's another one called Holiday out of that same line that has showed up on the shelves. I saw a couple of them. Was I was contemplating buying it, but my brother-in-law Rich has bought that. So be fun. We're gonna we'll do a head-to-head -head against those and see uh, see how they turn out. This is bottled in bond. I don't know if Holiday is. I, I'm guessing it's not. My guess is it's gonna be like 108 or something like that. But we'll see. Um. Got a question. It's a. It's actually a beer question, but it's related. It says, "Have you ever tried Goose Island Bourbon and Country Stout?" I, I know I've had some of the 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 Goose Island stouts before. Not a hundred percent. At first, I thought I had tried that, and I looked it looked it up on Google the images, and I did not recall that. So I'm not sure if I have actually actually tried that. It doesn't look like it's. It's around here a lot. It's sold single bottle at a time. So I did find a, a, a tobacco and liquor, liquor store not too far from me that says they have it. So I don't know, it's 14 something percent. So I might have to go get one of those. If you get a beer, a beer that is uh, uh, 29 proof, that's, that's a pretty good beer. <laughs> that's one of those, you might drink two and then you're, you're pretty much done. Um, uh, I'm not sure what this was. My Nancy wrote down, Melissa had a question or made a comment about how sparrows that eat sunflower seeds. I think I, I think I said that they don't eat sunflower seeds and she kind of corrected that. And I'm glad she did because I know they do. But the whole thing is in big groups, sun, sparrows like to go where they get their food the way they want it. And sparrows love cracked corn. You could put a pan of that out and you'd have as many sparrows around as you want. They, I'm sure they eat other things, uh, sunflower seeds and everything, but it put they put more work into it to get it. So they're going to go for their preference before they would go for sunflower seeds. 
So if you're, if you're, if the person that commented about that they only get uh, sparrows at their sunflower feeder, if that's the only feed they can find, that's what they're going to go for. And the other thing is, is if you're in an urban environment, a lot of the songbirds don't particularly care for that. They're, I mean, you see sparrows, they're skittish. The moment they see you, whew, and they're gone. You know, they just, but they come right back at the same speed. You look at other birds, uh, gosbeaks, cardinals, and ones like that. They are, they are timid birds as well. And but when they fly away, they won't come back for quite a while unless they're very comfortable with the setting. Thing is, if you're in town, there's a good chance you don't have a lot of those birds around. When I lived down in Knoxville, I was actually in town, and I'd get like one cardinal would would show up every once in a while, and I'd get. I get a few goldfinches, but here, and I'm in a more forested area, there's been times I look out there and there's seven or eight cardinals, males and, and mostly males and, and at least two females each time. And I get gosbeaks that I'd only ever seen one the entire time I was in Knoxville. So the birds, the wild birds are more readily available in a forested area is what I guess I would say. So, um, oh, she had, um, where I was supposed to mention the hawks. Lately, we've had, it looks like a nest of red-tailed hawks. The, uh, the fledglings are out and about. And the mother is on, in the process of teaching them to hunt and trying to get away from them. Because those hawks, once they get out of the nest, they, they want their babies to leave them. Because that mom's got this area, and she doesn't want to give up this area to to juvenile hawks to, to hunt and everything. So she's, we, I see her running around. She's got three of them. So early in the morning, there is just those, the red tail hawk squeals everywhere going on. And neighbors are like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm like, they're going to leave eventually. But the, I looked out yes, yesterday. No, that was this morning when I looked out to, to get ready to start feeding the birds. And there was, there was red tail hawk on the railing of my deck. And so I walked around because they're doing our, our Four Seasons room. I walked around the house to actually get up on that part of the deck to feed the birds. And I looked up and another one came swooping down and landed on my neighbor's chain link fence right across the road from me. So they're, they're out and about. And it, it's funny, but they're just not that good at hunters. They're, right now they're going through the trees and you can hear just hitting little branches and everything. Mom's not doing that. She's tucking her wings in when she gets close to those and... You know, she's going through like a, a gazelle in the Serengeti, you know, just flat, just really fast. So, but it's cool to see them, but I'm not, I'm a songbird feeder. And unfortunately with that means that I can inadvertently be raptor feeders too. So, so I'm hoping that the three of them find other territory and I don't have as much to worry about as far as that. Um, I have, I have, uh, if I see them up in a tree and they're getting ready to do it, a lot of times I've got a, I've got a CO2 uh, uh, BB rifle, and I can, and I just, I just shoot up, and I'll pop, I'll pop a branch down below them or so, and it's just enough sound and everything, and they'll fly away. You know, they, they can find their food in the wild. You know, I'd prefer they went out and found chipmunks and field mice and rabbits and stuff like that. You know, there's not much meat in a songbird. If they're picking one of them off, it's because they're desperate. And there's, I tell you what, I get rid of enough uh, mice and chipmunks around this area. There's plentiful food out there for those hawks, as long as they, they get better at hunting. So, but that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Um, what else did we have? Uh, I had a comment about the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Kentucky. I think they were asking if I'd ever tried any of those. Um, I've never been to the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It'd be... It'd be a great trip to go on. But they were asking, let's see, they were asking about Eagle Rare. And I've, he's, I've got a, a line of Eagle Rare up there. I, I've got four bottles of that. Eagle Rare, actually, for an allocated liquor in Iowa is pretty easy to find. And I've been, I've been lucky enough. I've, I've put four bottles in my collection, and I've helped other people put them in theirs. Um, Weller, I've got... 
right there, I got I got one 12 year Weller. Uh, Blanton's. There's a there's an open Blanton's and there's two more behind there. I gotta. I'm so bad about that. I gotta take a picture of the corks and find out which letters because I don't know if you knew or not. Blanton's. The horses that are on top of them. That's what a lot of people like Blanton's because it's such a it's such a cool bottle. It's it's kind of an overrated bourbon. I I personally like it. Um, and it's on my top shelf, but most people I think like that horse that's on the top. And a lot of people don't know there's a little letter on the back of them where on the horse where the number would be or, or whatever in horse racing. And you can collect the entire name Blanton's. So I gotta find out which three I've got up there. So I know if I go places, if I see some to make sure at least I get the letters I don't have. Um, yeah, and then of course you know the Buffalo Trace Distillery makes uh, makes Buffalo Trace, and there's a there's a partial bottle there, about two thirds, and there's three more behind that. So yeah, I'm re I really like the Buffalo Trace line. I, I like it too. There's there's really not a bad distillery out there, um, but you just everybody's going to favor certain ones. I talked about in the last one that I I have a quite a favor towards Jim Beam, it seems like. I didn't even realize I, I was doing it, but a lot of the stuff that I've bought and everything uh, is follows out of the Beam family. So, um, I think that is about it. So, we'll just kind of let it go from there. Hey, if you guys want me to keep doing this, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I, there is a few other uh, meteor questions that uh, I will tell you that I asked my brother-in-law, Rich, if, hey, are you interested in setting in and you can you can uh, be a guest co-host with me? And he said yes, that he would do it. So we might save a few of those for when the two of us are together and we'll we'll, we'll taste taste test something. If uh, let's see what what could we taste test? Um, well, we we're talking about opening that Weller twelve year, and that's something that most people don't get a, a shot at finding a twelve year Weller. And I found that actually in the lip, liquor store at retail. So, and, and you look at that online, secondary market is, is 350 to 400 bucks. So I was really happy to find that along with the bookers that I've found that are up in that price range. I've got, actually Rich found this for me up in Ankeny. And if, if, you're, if you're big into bourbon, this, this George Magnus, this uh, cigar blend bourbon, highly sought after. I was down in uh, Florida, and that's where I tried I tried a, a, a pour of Rip Van, Rip Van Winkle and a pour of 20-year Pappy Van Winkle, which, boy, those are bucket list ones. This was, the, was almost the same price as the pour of Pappy was. And they said they've been trying to get a bottle of cigar blend from Joseph Magnus for two years and just had not been able to find one. And they said, well, said, have you ever had it? And I said, yeah, I've had it. Uh, I've got a bottle of it. And they were just flabbergasted. They had, they'd never had anybody in there that had a bottle of it. And here it came into to a lick, uh, li little liquor store thing in, in Ankeny, Iowa. And Rich said it had been there for three or four days. So even the bourbon hunters had missed it. So I was blessed with that, man. Thank, big thanks to Rich for getting that for us. So and that's what I always say, us, because it's kind of like my collection's his collection, his collection's my collection. So we we share and share alike with uh, everything we get. So uh, so with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go, and we'll talk to you later. Keep drinking.